Uh, last time on We Need to Talk, Pepin was weird, like always, and Meter had a story. Uh, and I interrupted them to end the episode. So, uh, um, Meter was a story? Ho- hold on, hold on. I had somebody yelling at me for something the other day, which wasn't even true. He made it up. And uh, he said, um, I know this isn't your fault, and I'm sorry, but I have to yell at someone, and it looks like it's going to be you. That logic does not make any sense. And in his mind, there is no doubt that he has to yell at somebody. And that's really sad to me that there it's not even an option to him. He has to yell at somebody in his mind. And it just happens to be I was the one who answered the phone, so he was yelling at me. That's fucked. That's weird. And there are people who think like that, and that's what they have in their heart is that much anger that they're willing to take it out on people that they know they're not supposed to take it out on. I'm trying to, like... Because, okay, I can kind of understand that to some degree, but I'm also having a hard time with that. Hmm. Like, I get venting. So venting makes sense. Mm-hmm. But that's not venting. That I mean, I guess it is venting, but... It, it was He was frustrated by something that he thought happened that didn't happen, but that's not relevant. What's relevant is, in his perspective, a company did something wrong, and I am the company. Okay. That's his perspective. And he knows that, you know, you can't just fully answer it, but... And, and it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. It has nothing even really to do with the company. What it has to do with is all this anger that he has that he is funneling towards this small amount of anger he has about a small thing that did or did not happen that in his mind happened. And because it's all he's letting it everything else build up underneath it, he's pushing it all out from the bottom. So instead of just getting that little bit that may be applicable, it's it's everything and it's making his life hell. And it's I feel really bad for people like that. That's so weird. And somebody else was like, well, I feel bad. I feel bad for his wife. It's like she must have to deal with that all the time. And I'm like, I don't feel bad for her. She has a choice. Mm-hmm. Like if you know who you're with and if you're choosing to stay with that person to not address it with them, like. I think it's as much her responsibility to bring that up to him and be like, why are you being a dick? Like, there's something going on in his life that he needs to work on and he needs to to work to not be as angry. And it just blows my mind that he knows that it's wrong and he's going to do it anyway. He's actively telling me, I know this is wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. That is such a weird... Oh God! Because C- okay, I get I get part of that. I mean, I, I get it to some degree, but I, I also just don't understand that. Because if you know it's wrong, don't do it. I I get th- so, so there's something that I believe, which is that we're not like a single personality. I think we're all multiple personalities, you know, within our brain, and this explains why we can have like these two differing aspects so we can be like extremely insecure and think we're like the you know complete worst person in the world but we can have this other part of ourselves that thinks we're better than everybody that that's me for certain i have this one part that's really insecure and this other part that thinks i'm better than everyone else Mm -hmm. and these two parts are like equal in size and they don't make any sense together Mm -hmm. but it's like the mind creates has this one issue so it creates this other thing to offset it I have this one part of me which is extremely rational, but this other part of me which is like extremely random and it's out there and nonsensical. It's like I have all these like sub personalities, and I, I understand that this person has this one sub personality which is like you know I understand that this isn't your fault here. You know you, you have nothing to do with this. You're just an employee there, and you know you're a representative of the company, so I don't want to like yell at you because there's nothing that you know you're gonna try to help me the best you can. Blah 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 blah. But then he has this other part of him that just wants to you know, lash out and just start getting angry. What's weird about that is he's trying to express both at once, but you can't. You can't express both like that. Well, I mean, he did. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely did for 20 minutes. Oh, God. that That's so fucked up. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, to me, like it was, it was okay because I recognized that it didn't have to do with me. And honestly, like, yeah, it was really frustrating and annoying to have to be nice to somebody who 
knows that they're actively trying, like not even trying to be nice back, uh, knows that they are supposed to be and doesn't give a shit. That was really frustrating. Uh-huh. Um, but it, at the same time, I also, I get it. Like that's where his life is at and I don't know what's going on in his life. It could be something really shitty happened yesterday and this has, this is how it's manifesting and like it is what it is. And uh, once you realize it's not about you, it's about them. Uh, it becomes a lot easier to manage stuff like that. Plus I thought about running over his head with my car. <laughs> no, I didn't that, but I thought that'd be funny to say. <laughs> it's. A tough thing to deal with too because i've experienced that a couple times where it's like i'm angry about something so for instance there's this one time where uh, i was returning some headphones because they stopped working uh and uh this is some whole thing where they couldn't return them at the full price or something like that i don't know what it was exactly and I got kind of mad about that. I know it's their policy. I know that she didn't do anything, but I was still mad and I wasn't taking it out. On, so it's like, you know, when you're mad, but you're trying to be nice. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what it was like. And, but she took it like I was like an angry customer, mm-hmm. but I wasn't trying to be angry with her or anything like that. But I was just kind of like, like, just kind of like, mm-hmm. like, like under the skin. And that's kind of hard to navigate. And what's also hard to navigate as someone who's in customer service is when someone approaches you as the thing so right now i'm in banking they approach me like i'm the bank Mm -hmm. or if something went wrong with the account they act like i was the one who did it wrong Mm -hmm. which you know if i am so be it but it's like i I can't like i'm not a rep i'm a representative of the bank but i'm not the bank themselves i'm not the person who made that mistake Mm -hmm. i can do my best to help you with the situation and kind of resolve the issue and so i'm there for but i can't just like take full accountability for it Mm -hmm. well Well, i mean you you can't take so this is this is the thing with good customer service is people want to be able to blame the problem on someone because then it's their responsibility to fix it and then it's something tangible but sometimes that's just not the case and the problem is something that either can't be blamed on someone or isn't blamed on the person that you're talking to right then So good customer service is acknowledging that there's frustration and that something is wrong. I agree. Something is wrong here. And um, I'm going to take I either, you know, you did do something wrong and then it's I take responsibility for that action, for what happened. Um, Or sometimes it's not. And it's um, we're going to resolve this together. I am going to take the responsibility of making this right. So a lot of times it's not about taking responsibility for the mistake, but rather for the solution. And that can really help a lot of people. Now, some people are completely irrational and nothing will matter. I faced a lot of those, as I'm sure you have as well. Mm. Uh, But I find that most people, when you tell them that you're personally going to make it your mission to resolve the issue, you're going to take responsibility for the resolution that will will ease their their burden uh, in their own mind and make it you know make uh, them feel a lot better. Yep, yep. I I don't take responsibility for the problem, but the resolution, like you're saying, because mm-hmm. I think that's the way I've done very well with customer service. It's mm-hmm. something I really excel with, and I'm able to take an angry customer and have them leave. Maybe not happy, but leave uh, all right. Like, like they feel like I'm on their side and that's what's what what I try to do. It's like, number one, I'm, you know, a representative of the bank, but I'm just a person and I'm here to help you get to resolve this problem. It's more like I'm working with the bank as opposed to being the bank. Mm -hmm. Now, what's really tough is when people come at it from this angle that I am the bank. Mm -hmm. So like this one lady came up to me one time and she's like, you know, you guys messed up this, this and this, and you did this. I'm like, okay, so I didn't do any of this, but that's okay. I'm, I'm here to help fix this. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's kind of go through this. And you were supposed to do this. I'm like, okay, this is a whole different department. This is We don't even do this at the branch here. Mm-hmm. But let me try to t- help fix this. And then you did this. And it's like, she skipped on going, well, you did this, you did this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, no. Like, I, I'm, I'm not going to keep, like, I'm not going to defend the bank. I'm not going to say what happened wrong, right, or anything. But it's like it's when people attribute responsibility you can't really 
take it too much mm-hmm. to, to you. Like when people mess up, I, I think it's important, number one, not to say the person messed up, but also just to try to solve it. Because oftentimes when things get messed up, it's usually not them messing up, like us messing up. It's often the customer messing up, mm-hmm. which it happens way more than often. Mm-hmm. So like there's a customer recently who uh, he missed the payment and he missed the payment last the, the month before because he, uh, he he did it wrong. Mm-hmm. Like he was paying to principal when he should have been paying to the payment. And then he, you know, he came in, and, you know, was like, just make sure you do it right. You know, make it to the principal. And it's like, no, no, you want to do it to the payment because if you do the principal, the payment's not actually going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so he argued with like quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And then he got into a scuffle with uh, my my colleague because mm-hmm. my colleague like, explained it out to him and he just, no, I want you guys to do it right because blah, blah, blah. And it starts going on. It's like, sir, sir, we're trying to help you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're trying to help you your credit score here. Mm-hmm. And he just didn't get that. Yeah. Pe- people are irrational and weird in general. Um, but I think that there's also a lot of rationality to being irrational, uh, especially when people are mad. Uh, it's just easy to, uh, you want to focus. Anger is crazy. It's like sunlight. It wants to, you want to focus it to make it more powerful to get an action that you want. But really, it's like all scattered all over the place. And it's coming from so many different directions um, that when you focus it in, it, it's not beneficial to anybody. Um, and really, the, the best way to do it is to fragment it as much as possible and to handle it in each of its individual spots of where the frustration is coming from. I'm frustrated in this specific spot and this specific spot, not all that bound up together and then put into one issue. Um, I think that's pretty, pretty human nature. I'm sure I've fallen into, into similar quagmires in the past of doing similar things. Um, But now that I'm aware of it, I think it's a lot, it's a lot more easy to manage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things definitely where it's like there's that classic technique of when someone has a problem, you repeat back that problem to them, mm-hmm. like almost verbatim using their own language. Mm-hmm. And it's the stupidest thing because, you know, it's, you know, like a lot of these like kind of like, you know, secret uh, negotiation techniques and stuff like that that don't actually work. Okay. What, what you know, I'm talking about, like, oh, say this or do this, and but this is like one of those strategies that actually work really well. Mm-hmm. Like, if like sometimes we have conversations where we're talking about like life issues and stuff like that, and it's like you might tell me something, and then I'll just repeat it back to you, maybe in my own words, maybe in slightly in your words, but number one, get mixed so that we're both in agreement, but also you feel like you're being heard that way, mm-hmm. and you know, same when I'm talking to you about certain issues, you do that, and I think it kind of really helps with the empathy side of things and at least with customer service when i do that with customers especially angry customers it's like they feel like i understand the problem not arguing against that then we can move towards a solution mm-hmm. whereas i think people often feel like if you don't repeat it back to them that number one you don't understand them but also you're arguing against that mm-hmm. like like you're not, you're not understanding the problem and it's like no i am understanding the problem i'm trying to solve it but when you're trying to solve something for them if they don't think you understand it they think you're making arguments yeah like against the, that that they don't have a problem at all yeah there we had a customer who wanted something very specific and it was something that isn't really possible um they wanted uh, I, I can explain it briefly they wanted their invoice broken down in a way that broke out different parts to say what each part cost so i tried to understand what they were looking for and tried to explain to them why we can't do that that would be the equivalent of if you buy a car and then you say well i want to know how much the seat costs like well that, you didn't buy the seat you bought the car if I break it out by the seat, it's going to look like it costs more than what it actually costs because the seat in and of itself doesn't have a cost. The car is what you're buying. I want I buy a ticket to Disney World. I want to know how much it costs to ride Magic Mountain. Well, you didn't buy Magic Mountain experience. You bought Disney World. So you're paying for the whole experience, not this one little part of it. How can I break out your invoice to show one small part of a bigger thing that you purchased. Uh, And she did not understand, and I did my very best. And I even went so far to just take 
a percentage of what the total value was and try and break it out that way. And I sent that to her. Um, and she's like, you clearly do not understand what I need. And at this point, I'm too angry to even deal with it. So never mind. I'm like, great. That was a great resolution because now I don't have to do anything more. But the 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 communication there was so broken because she didn't want to. Every time I tried to explain and say, well, do you mean this? And try and make sure I understood, she got more frustrated. So it, be, it made it impossible for me to do your technique of repeat it back because that pissed her off more. Even when I was repeating back almost exactly what she was saying. Mm-hmm. It, it sounds like she didn't actually know what she wanted. I, I mean, I tried. I tried to find out why they needed that. And she said, I don't know. I just may need it. It's like, that doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Nothing. Why did they want that anyway? Was it like... I, was, I wasn't I was sure. I, I My assumption was that it was an insurance thing. Mm-hmm. So I said, oh, okay. So you, are you using this for like an insurance thing? Well, I don't know. I may. I may not. Like, oh, well, I can't help you if you don't even know why you need it. Like... The only thing I can think of is maybe they're trying to see how much, okay, not saying you're ripping them off, mm-hmm. off but how mm-hmm. much you're ripping them off by. Mm-hmm. Like, she wants to say, okay, so this is how much you're charging for all the materials. And and obviously that came through my head as well. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the big reasons that you don't break things out that way. Because if you look at it in that way, it could look like you're being ripped off. That could go for anything. But honest, because honestly, if I say that this thing is worth this much, then as a whole, if you multiply it, like it's going to look like it's more expensive. But that's not the way that things are priced. So I think this is the metaphor here. So imagine you go into a pizza shop and, you know, you say, OK, how much do you pay for flour? How much do you pay for the water? How much do you pay for this? Mm-hmm. Okay, I want this exact listing out. Okay, so how much do you pay for labor? Okay, this is how much I'm going to pay you for the pizza. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's not how it works because you combine those components together and you get something new. Mm-hmm. And, like, they had already they had already used the service. The service was done. They just needed to pay. And they were withholding a certain amount of money and they were trying to get an invoice at that point that broke out a small portion of it that was that I think they thought might be equivalent to the amount that they owed but that wasn't the case it was like there was a small thing that wasn't done on the same day as the whole project as a whole so we said listen give us x amount and you can keep this amount and in as good faith that we're going to come back and do what we say we're going to do that was us extending to them despite the fact that their contract says they're supposed to pay in full. Us extending an olive, olive branch and saying, we can't physically do this thing right now. But as soon as we can, we'll come back and we'll collect the remainder at that point. And they wanted to say that the value of what we were doing was the amount that they owed. And that wasn't the case. We actually gave them way more that they could withhold than what it was actually worth. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pe- people will try to be cheap a lot. And that was my assumption was that they were going to try and reverse engineer some numbers by taking this small amount and saying, well, then the whole thing should have cost this much. And like, that's not, that's not what the agreement was. So like, stop. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. If you need it for a legit reason, I'm happy to help you. I will do whatever I can to do so. But if you just want it for no reason and you're just making extra work for me, fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right, so... Speaking of fuck yourself, yeah, head on over to our Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how are we going to end this episode? <laughs> I'm going to say fuck yourself. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you two middle fingers. I mean, I don't have to because this is the podcast, but I'm going to give you two middle fingers. Uh, He's really doing it. Yep. Yeah, uh, so... Uh, see, this sounds like something where we're actually not doing it, but trust no, me, I'm doing it right now. Listen, he's really doing it, guys. Okay, this sounds like I'm not doing it, though. I'm, I'm actually doing this. But really, he's legitimately doing it. This is not like a time when we said we got naked on the podcast, but we actually didn't. Well, we did. Okay, th- but that was after the podcast. <laughs> okay, that's true. <laughs> but he's really got middle fingers up right now. Yep. I got actually two middle fingers. He had him down when I said that, but then he put him right back up, so I wasn't a liar. Well, yeah, because I was holding him up for like a couple seconds there, like maybe like 20 seconds, 22 and a half seconds. So many seconds. And it kind of got tired, to be honest. And also, I'm holding this bald cap for no reason. So if you want to hold... (laughs) Why that? (laughs) Why are you holding the bald cap? 
cap. I don't know. That's so fucking weird. I think that's kind of why it's hard to put my middle fingers up because I'm holding it like like this. See? Oh wow, that's cool. See, see, this is just to prove that I'm actually putting my middle fingers up. Because <laughs> why would I lie about holding a bottle cap? Man, we're either <laughs> really good at improv <laughs> or you're really doing it. So, speaking of weird things I do, uh, bullet caps, and also a podcast. Uh, what's that podcast called? It's well, called We Need to Talk, and you're listening to it right now. But Nathan, what if they want to tell you weird things that they do? Well, if they do that? If, if that's the case, wait, where? That's what I'm asking. Oh, well, they can do it on our podcast. Oh, you're inviting people on our show. Am I? That's what it sounds like. That sounds scary. You're going to listen back to this and be like, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh, no. This, this, okay, okay, well, I have to double down now. I can't, like, take it back. Hi, editing, mate. Hey, if you want to come on the show, give us a tweet at twitter.com slash um, WNTTTTT1. Or on Facebook at We Need to Talk Show. Uh, there's too many T's there. Please don't talk to me. Okay, talk to me. Talk to me. Hey, Nate, I noticed, and I'm bringing this up live on air because I think it's funny. I noticed every time you put something about our show, including within the episode itself, you always put WNNT instead of WNTT. And we got to fix that because you're fucking with our branding. What's our podcast? WNTT. We need to talk. This is Jason Almy from Shit Happens When You Party Naked. We're a wild party show where we don't drink anything at all. Actually, we're totally sober, but we still manage to party and get wild. My wife does a uh, fantastic Samuel L. Jackson impression. I double dare you, motherfucker. She's even better than that. I'm so sorry, honey. I fucked that one up. Uh, we also talk about nutrition, sex, jizz, penis. We bake uh, cock-shaped cakes. Check us out. Shit Happens When You Party Naked on iTunes, Google, Stitcher, Podcast, SoundCloud, Overcast, Undercast. Shit cast, whatever cast. We're on all the casts. Check us out. Twitter at SHWYPN. Keep listening to podcastnh.com, motherfuckers.